Can you scan and 3D print a bucket seat? Well, given the fact that I'm struggling to find seats that'll fit the carry and the standard bench is in a horrible condition, why don't we find out? Let's grab this little guy, let's start scanning and we'll see what happens. So, welcome back if you've been here before. If you haven't been here before, my name's Chris and I work in this little shed and I have a Suzuki carry and this little guy started life uh, came over from Japan last year started life as a 659cc tiny little truck and I'm now fitting a Thunder Ace engine for my bike and one of the things I want to work on which is something I'm going to explain in a second for you is seating because there isn't any there isn't any because I took it out but I took it out because the original stuff is in horrible condition so why did he take the seats out if you had seats? I hear you ask. And this is why. This is the back bench. It's the original one. It's split and it is horribly unsupportive. Uh, we've also got a cushion there. And there's one in a pile over there somewhere too. And I've been through a lot of stress with this, trying to find seats that'll fit. There are some battle scars, which you can see here. When I tried to make a small AC Cobra style bucket seat fit, that didn't work. So I need to go and patch that up and weld that back in. And you can see we've also got some holes in the floor and that's because the seats actually clamp onto the bottom there's a rubber seal and it, there's a, a clip down there you clip the seat down and then you sit on like a metal frame one of the hurdles i've got is the struts sit under the seat so that means the seat kind of goes along and then down and then back up the other problem i've got is this backrest the way it's tilted the seat sits in that recess so any flat backed bucket seats that you get will kind of go from here so you lose, I mean, I lost up to about three or four inches of seating space when I tried fitting one. So that's not going to work. So my plan is I'm going to use the Vega, the 3D scanner. I'm going to scan the inside of the truck, but I'm going to do it in two parts because I want to make sure I've got clearance to the doors. So if I have the doors shut, I can scan that side from over here. And I can scan this side from over there. And then I can use the software to stitch it together, give me a full scan of the interior. And then I can come up with something to fit in those gaps. I can also design a center console. You'll notice we now have the hydro in here. The shift has been modified. Stuff's been moved around. So I want to make a new center console too. That will come at a later date. I want to check the seating though, see what happens. And if I can get something that can fit on the frames, scoop down and back up and stop here, that would be perfect. So again, here's the Vega. If you've been here before, it needs no introduction, but this is a portable scanner from Einstar, which replaces, well, doesn't replace the Einscan, but it kind of adds more features, such as the fact that you can scan remotely my unit's over there where the computer is. I'm in here with this. I can scan the truck in here, take it from here, back into there, work on it, do whatever I need remotely, which is great. But you've also got cloud sharing and you've also got kind of near and far range scanning features on it as well. You can do tracking dots. You've got scanning spray if you need to cover anything that's shiny or black. or this, It's a handy little bit of kit. And I've had this for a couple of months now and the thing is genuinely still impressing me every day. So I'm going to get this set up to scan in the truck. To be honest, we should be okay. Using far mode, I don't need a huge amount of accuracy. The main thing is to get the seat frames and the back, and I can model everything else from that. I don't need super, super accurate scans for this. I just need a rough shape, which the far mode would be perfect for. And I'm gonna set some tracking dots up, I think, to just, this back section is a bit flat and a bit repetitive, so I don't want to lose tracking over there, especially because I wanna try and stitch two different scans together. So I'm gonna get some alignment dots, stick them on the big flat areas, and then we'll start scanning in two sections. These little guys are the tracking dots if you've not seen them before. So these allow the scanner to find in 3D space where there's flat geometry. Normally the scanner wants kind of edges and features and things to pick up and align everything. But on a big flat panel, I'm a bit concerned it might not be able to align everything properly, especially when I come to stitch the two sides together. So rather laboriously, you need to stick these scanning dots over everything I want to cover that hasn't got much geometry. Basically, I think it's just going to be the back, but I'll have a quick look and uh, I'm not gonna, I can't even do it one-handed. Like, I'll show you. If you wanna know how to apply a sticker. Yeah, I can't do it, go on. There we go. That's how you apply a sticker. Give me two minutes. In fact, you don't need me to wait two minutes. I'm just gonna jump forward and boom, there we go. So again, I've put all these tracking dots on the back just cause I want Star Vision to have enough data and enough alignment markers to be able to align the whole of this and make one complete scan when we stitch it together. It's just awkward. I don't want to climb, like the truck's quite small. I don't want to be climbing in and having legs and feet and hands all over the place whilst I'm trying to scan in case that gets picked up. So we'll do it in two sections. We'll do the passenger side from here and then we'll do the driver's side from over there and then we'll stitch them all together. 
We're going to try it without the scanning spray first, see what happens. If it's not picking it up, we can always give that a quick buster scanning spray as well. Before we can do that, we need to calibrate. So we're going to do a quick calibration of this, and then I can get back over and start scanning the truck. You need to calibrate every seven days. I have done stuff without calibrating it, and it's been absolutely fine, but I can't do this one-handed. Uh, I have done this without calibrating again. It's not recommended, but it's been accurate enough for what I've been doing. But just for peace of mind on this one, because it's quite a big scan, I'm going to calibrate it and get back over. Literally just been a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long at all. I'm just lazy and forget sometimes. But it's fine. We'll get a good start on this one, get it calibrated, and then we'll be back to the truck and be scanning in no time. A uh, quick bit of setup here as well. So we've got resolution just set in the middle. Again, I don't need it to be super accurate. I just need the general features in the general area, which is why fast mode is really, really good for this, because you can do big areas quite easily and you get enough accuracy you can still reverse engineer from. We've also got marker alignment turned on. We're just using a six mil dots, but you can actually get 12 mil dots too, which means that when you're covering the outside of a car, for instance, if you're scanning a full vehicle, you can use the 12 mil dots, use less of them. It's easier to apply them, easier to take them off as well. Plus it means you're not using as many, so they last a lot longer. But I don't have the 12s, I'll use that for the outside of the truck when it comes to doing that. But for now, six mils on the back and we can pretty much start scanning. So let's get this turned on and hold steady. So you can see just from here, it's already picking up the far side of the truck. It's actually picking up enough data about the hydro handle as well, which is quite interesting. Not reflection of the sun there. Let's see if we go around this way. You can see it's already really quickly picking up data. A little bit too close to the back. You can see those red dots are the markers that it's aligned with too. And it's absolutely flying through this. You see the scanners are actually picking up the door cards absolutely fine too. I'm surprised that because they're black, I was expecting that to be an issue, but I'm trying to do this one-handed whilst also filming. It's quite difficult. But it seems to be doing a great job so far picking up the inside. Picks up the door handles, the door cards, a bit of the dash. I'm starting to get in the way there, so we'll move back. So I'm gonna stop it there, I think. And that's what's paused. And you can see from the scan here, we've got basically the passenger side, everything we need. We've got the seat base. We've got where the strut top is. So that's good. So we'll go around the other side and then start scanning the driver's side from the passenger. So now that's one half done. What I'm gonna do is scan that half as a second scan, and then we can align it all together in software. Again, this is why the tracking dots are here. Hopefully you can use these as references to stitch everything together in the PC. I'm not going to show you this screen this time because it was very difficult to do this one-handed and also hold the camera there. So I'm just going to work my way along, get the bits down the bottom corner that I couldn't get from that side. Again, just picking up a bit at the top here. Just working my way around, going over areas that are red, trying to get a bit more detail. I don't need the inside of the arches and stuff done. It can pick them up, it is picking them up actually, but I don't need that in a massive amount of detail because all I need is these areas for the seat frames. So, come around here a bit. You see, these trucks are tiny, so it's a little bit awkward. It is actually picking up the um, hydro handle as well, which is good. I was worried with it being black that it wouldn't be able to pick it up, but it's doing absolutely fine, so no scanning spray needed. And that is basically it. So, pause that. In fact, you can actually see it's got pretty much the full interior just from the one side, which I'm surprised at. But again, I did need the door on this side closed, which I can't do while scanning. So we'll take these, process these meshes, get them back to Star Vision, and we'll have a go at aligning them. So today we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, we are going to be using file transfer so we can work in Star Vision. So to do so, we connect by USB cable, hit file transfer, and then all of our stuff has appeared up here. So we want this one, and we want this one. We want to import these and we want to align these. So, you see import workspace. And here we are in the workspace. Sorry about the noise in the background. I do have this thing running again. Uh, so it's making a wee bit of noise there. Can't do much about it. I'm just a very, very busy person, I guess. So these are our models. These are the point clouds taken straight off the scanner. And we've got up here, we can click between the two. There's one, and there's the other one. And these at the minute, are not aligned in any way, shape or form. So to do that, we go to the little jigsaw piece up here and we select our models, this one and this one. 
There's a couple of ways to align these things. There are manual adjustments if you want to, but we're gonna use the auto settings because it has been quite good for me so far. For this, we want marker alignment up the top here and automatic. We don't wanna mess with anything at all. I just wanna see what this can do with these two scans. Hit alignment down the bottom and it's already done. That was literally seconds. And you can see everything's aligned. We've got the door cards on both sides, so I know the extremities. That's pretty good. So we'll add this to our list and we will come back out of alignment mode. And our list has now populated with our alignment result. So if we click on this one, there's our point cloud with our alignment. And you can see I've managed to pick up the handles, which are black, which is great. I just need some idea of where they are so I can model around them for the center console. And I've got everything I need. So what I also want to do with this is I want to align it. Uh, I want to get as close as possible to the XYZs, where the truck's sitting. This is kind of sitting wonky at the minute. So what I need to do is go to the align tool up here. It brings up three views. And in these views, we can now start rotating things and moving them whichever way we want. So I want to get this as close as I possibly can to being level. So to do so, we can click and drag stuff over here, align it that way. Tilt it back a little bit. And there we go. Now this should have us a nice centered view. Just a line through the struts. I don't know if you can see in here. But use these bolts on the outside. We've got one here and one here. Align them. The seat, that's kind of horizontal. That's fine. And then this too. We are pretty nicely aligned there. So again, hit finish on that, and that's now we oriented our model. So that's sitting basically the correct angle for us now for how we would be in the truck. Just makes things easier when it comes to modeling in Fusion. When you know where the floor is down here, then it's easier to model in your XYZ planes. Now that it's aligned, I also want to just measure between a couple of known points. So if we go to measure, we can measure distance, select two points on a surface. So we're gonna go from that bolt to that bolt and according to this that should be in a straight line 834.8 millimeters so let's get back to the truck just double check that make sure everything's accurate i could have probably picked a better place to measure because that stuff's in the way but there's zero there and around the other side i'm hoping well i'm confident but it should be There we go, 834 millimetres are measured. So wonderful, that's nice and accurate. I'm happy with that. So back in here, not back in there because I'm printing ASA and if everybody knows anything about 3D printing, ASA stinks and it's not nice to be around for extended periods. But yeah, I think I'm gonna end it there for today because there's a lot of work still to do on designing the seats and printing them and assembling. That'll all come later. But for today, this is about getting the data that I needed to be able to produce the parts that I want to make something bespoke. Because like I said, the truck, I can't get seats that fit it. There are people out there that have used other seats, but they're compromised on space. You sit too far forwards, too high. I want something that's gonna fit in nicely into the truck in the original positions, keep you sat low. And it should be much better for drifting, track time, whatever else we do when the bike engine's finished. Um, to do that, I need a scan and the scanner continues to blow me away. Um, it's been so easy to use, so easy to set up. The scanning took five minutes in total to do the scan, 30 seconds to stick some stickers down and then a couple of minutes on the PC to align them. And you can see for yourself, the measurements I've just showed you, millimeter accurate across that area. I'm happy with that. That's even with stitching things together. So love the thing still. Uh, again, massive thanks to Einstar for sending me the Vega to try out. I've been enjoying the last few months. It's been so nice to use compared to all the kind of cheaper scanners with the rubbish software the scanner's losing track and all the time. This thing's been great. So big thank you to them. It's been a huge help. Thank you guys for coming along to watch as well. Hopefully I'll have more updates for you soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Bye, bye.